guys, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about part two of your Glide for Beginners 101. So in the first video, we talked about setting things up. We, went, we talked kind of fast how we set up the delivery side, the block side, the upper body, and how we carry the shot. So one of the key things I hear a lot of people, people frown upon the side shuffle. And that's a very good way to start teaching the motion of the throw. So remember, one of the things we talk about with a side shuffle is this is where, again, part of a throwing progression, but we're gonna start working the middle to the finish. So a side shuffle, we're gonna kinda do this, we're gonna create a little separation, we're gonna be sinking down, sliding out, and we're dropping into basically the position we talked about in part one we're getting into that power position. So remember, one of the key things we do with the throwing chain reaction, we take that unnatural, that speed, right? And we teach you how to break it down into six pillars so that you can train because in two seconds, the difference between a beginner and an Olympic champion is basically tenths of a second. And when we say that, we mean seven, you know, six, seven tenths of a second. So the difference between a brand new thrower and the Olympic champion is, you know, 0.7 seconds. It's not a lot. So it's a very fast period of time, but it's considerably faster and makes a big difference. So the system teaches you how to break that down into six pillars so that you can learn faster and actually work on the things that need to be worked on. Now, that being said, what we're gonna do is we start with our side shuffle. So what you're gonna do is create this basic principle. We load down, do you see how I'm staying here? I'm not, a lot of kids do this. They reach like this and then what they're doing is they're going to make this mistake. So they're, you're always trying to train to learn how to use the, the legs and punch into the throw. It makes a huge difference. That's where all your power's at. I always tell people, everybody's pretty much got a bigger, bigger squat than they do a bench. So we have to utilize the squat to maximize the bench, right? So if you think about it in those simple terms. So remember, with a side shuffle, the key is start kind of a little bit on angle, get a little bit of separation. You're gonna slide down, slide this out, and then you're gonna kinda get that little crow hop type position. We wanna land on double bent legs, and we're gonna be able to push, rotate and push in a thing. We're gonna combine those elements that we talked about in the first video to this video. So one of the simple drills that I like that we do in our system is a glide. Um, it's, it's basically, we call it kind of our glide wheel. We're gonna set up here and we're gonna learn how to rotate and stay here. So with the glide, we're keeping that upper body back and we're learning how to create separation. So when we do our shuffle, so we're usually gonna always set separation. So many kids are doing this and then they go here and they're opening versus sitting separating here dropping, sliding, and getting this way, which is gonna be now ex increased a little bit in difficulty by feeling how to keep everything back and feeling that slight rotation that occurs. Remember, for years we've always talked about it's more of a punch or a pushing motion in because you're trying to keep the shot on a pretty linear line. You wanna minimize too much rotation, right? So the shot is gonna come here, it's gonna be coming this way, and we're gonna come this way, and we wanna punch. And this is why you tend to see gliders slightly here, because they're trying to keep that shot on a more linear angle into the finish. So, what we're gonna do, our next step when you're teaching, is you're gonna teach this drill, and they're just gonna push. Now, I like to tell, don't put a lot of weight on this, because the big mistake is you'll see a lot of kids do this, then they do this, and now, they're no longer on top of the delivery leg. So what you wanna do is you wanna basically be able to stay here, have as little weight as possible, shoulders and everything squared up. We're gonna push and we're gonna keep the shoulders back here so that we can finish in this. And now you start teaching athletes how to work the ground, apply power and increase distance. So again, really simple tips to help you understand how to better teach the glide. We see a lot of things and we see so much of of this type of stuff if they're doing a shuffle and then it's here or we see people trying to do this type of thing they're all loaded up and they immediately do this and everything is incorrect this seems like a pretty simple motion but this just takes time to learn because as we always talk about inside the throwing chain reaction 
Throwing is unnatural and it happens fast. That's why we break down six pillars. We teach you throwing progressions. Our glide progression has 14 videos and on how to put together a progression. Not saying you should do 14 things on a progression, but we can mix and train specific things. And then we have our pillar drills. We have 60 pillar drills and those accompany the progression. So if you'd like more information on that, be sure to click the link below. Hopefully this helps you to better understand how to move your athletes from a stand throw into the moving across the ring that's going to increase distance and help them start moving closer to that glide and that's what we'll talk about in the next video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to comment, like, share this bad boy so we can help more athletes and coaches improve the sport and be sure to check out Throwing Chain Reaction System. Link is down below. Thanks guys and we will see you on the next video.